welcome to the Stitch Sessions. It's Karen here, and today we have a crochet quick chat for you. Now, if this is your first time here, I recommend you checking out the crochet quick chat playlist on this channel, and I recommend you save that playlist to your favorites. And it's just a playlist of uh, videos where I answer a lot of the most common questions or challenges to do with the craft of crochet. And in today's quick chat tutorial, we're talking all about the granny rectangle motif. You guys absolutely love this motif right next to the granny square. And the most common question I get is, how do I know how many chains to begin with for my particular project? So in the past I've used, I've shown you a sample of the granny rectangle and, and I've done it both in solid as well as in the granny shells. So for example, here you can see these are solid rectangles, no spaces. And then this, now this is a square, but I've done one on the channel where we use the granny shells, which is the most common and popular one to use. And so sometimes people are using this to create uh, an Afghan or a coverlet for a bed, perhaps even a table runner, something like that. So on that video of how to crochet a granny rectangle, super common question I get is how do I know how many chains to begin with in my spine for my particular size? So that is what I'm gonna try to answer for you today really quickly and succinctly. It's a method that I have developed, uh, I guess I will say, only because I haven't really found any other videos out there that actually address this issue. There, there may be out there, and if there are, please reference it for us in the comments down below. But I'm gonna show you guys my tried and true method. It is not necessarily um, scientific to like a millimeter, but it's pretty darn accurate and it's really, really quick to figure out. So let's just take a look at the basic shape we have here. So when we're talking about the rectangle, it's a shape that has four corners and two sides are longer than the other two sides, okay? So you could have it this way or you could have it this way. You know, a lot of times if you're doing this, let me just zoom in here. A lot of times if you're doing this for a bed, perhaps this is the headboard, I'm not an artist, and you've got the legs here and then you've got your pillows. And so let's say you want to create a coverlet for your bed. So maybe you're gonna say, well, I've got 60 inches in my length, and the length is always the longest measurement, and I've got 40 inches in my width. Okay, or if you're using centimeters, it would be the same thing. So you've got one, side that's longer than the other. So I want to create this granny rectangle and I want to make it nice and large. How do, how do I know how many chains to start with in the middle? That's the main question. So let's just look at the rectangle shape itself. So if we've got this here, this is just kind of an example of how our granny motif expands. It begins in the center and then it builds its way out evenly and equally on all four sides. So generally we start with a chain, a starting chain, and then we start building our rectangle with more and more rounds. So let's take a look at a granny square, for example. The difference between a square and a rectangle is the rectangle needs that little starting chain spine and the square starts just with a little center point. So this is just a little sample I whipped up here. It's a perfect square, and how I know that is when I take the measurements, all the sides are equal in length. So if I measure this here, okay, so that's four and a half going across, and then if I measure this side, it's also four and a half. So what does that tell us? It tells us that with every round, 
the length of all the sides increase at the exact same measurement. So I hope that makes sense to you. So I think mine come out to each row, if I take a measurement of this shell stitch, it's just a little over half an inch, but let's just, let's just pretend that it is half an inch. So if I've got four rows and each row is half an inch, then I know that my work is gonna increase two inches, two inches, two inches, and two inches. So it's always the same amount from the center point. Now, like I said, mine just so happens to be four and a half. So we know it's not two inches, it's two and a bit there, okay? So the idea, like I said, is that each round increases the length in the exact same fashion. We want to take that principle and move it over into a rectangular shape. So we want to start with our chain, which is our spine, and we want every row from there on out to increase the same number of measurement units, whether it's the long side or the short side. So just in case that doesn't make sense to you, and actually let me just draw this in here because it might be a little confusing why that's thick. It just so happens that I just did a few rows and left it. But let's do that so it looks nice and even, right? So there we go, that's better. So this is our chain. This would be round number one. So one, and I'm doing this so you can see that it will be the same measurement all the way around. And then the next one would be round two, round three, round four, etc. We want to make sure that every round increases at the same rate. So if we look back at our bed coverlet question or measurements, so this person's saying, I'm going to do 60 inches in length and 40 inches in width. So let's just transpose that here to our big granny rectangle. So we know we have, actually let me use this so you guys can see better. So we have 60 inches, okay? And then we have 40 inches, okay? So we know that it's also 60 inches on this side, and of course, 40 inches on the top. So these two are equal and these two are equal. So the magic number, it's gonna be so easy, you're probably gonna start to laugh. How you find this length of chain is you take your length measurement, which is always your longest, so you have 60, and you subtract your width measurement, which is always your shortest. Okay, and that is gonna give you a difference of 20 inches. So what does that tell me? It tells me that in order for all my sides to increase equally, I've gotta take away 20 inches from the length, okay? So that is what will help us increase each side equally. So let's take this a little further here. And let me just clarify, that's the length and this is the width. So now when I begin my granny rectangle, I want my starting chain to give me 20 inches, okay? So my chain is going to be 20 inches in length. So what you would do is you would create a chain until you get that length. Now this is where, as always, it's really important anytime you're doing starting chains, make sure that you're not chaining too tightly because this will affect your final result. You also don't want it to be too loose. You wanna chain somewhere in the middle, okay? So you would chain up 20 inches worth of chains and then just mark down that number. Now, if you are using the actual granny shell pattern, make sure that it's as close to multiples of three as possible because that is what's gonna give you your spacing here. 
If you're just doing solid, then you don't have to really worry about it too much, okay? So I have 20 inches. Now, let's take a look at this so that we understand this a little bit better. So once we've got our 20 chains, then we would begin with row number one, and then we'd work our way around, and then we'd go up to row number two and work our way around. So we've got 20 inches in chain, so if we back up here, our length, our final length is 60. If we take away that 20 inches, it brings us back to our 40. So we're just using a different uh, order here. So we know that our width is 40. So that's good because we don't have any width to begin with, but we do have length to begin with. So. Our width is starting from point zero, and then it's gonna work its way outward. Okay, so same thing from here, it's going to work its way outward. Okay, now also the same thing from here, it works its way outward. Wow, that's a really crooked line. <laughs> and then the same thing from here, it works its way outward. So I hope this is making sense. So the two ends of this chain is where we're gonna see the magic happen. So we know 20 inches has been taken up by the spine and we've got 40 inches left, but we have to divide it between the two ends. So if I divide 40 by two, I get 20. So I know that my work is going to increase by 20 inches on each side of that spine. And then guess what? 20 plus 20 gives me 40, okay? And so when you look at the bottom end and the top end, we also have 20 here and 20 here. So see how it's all increasingly, all these three sides are increasing at the same rate. When you go to this end, this is 20 on this side, 20 on that side. These three sides are increasing at the same rate, yeah? And then of course, our spine is nice and steady. So we know that the increase 20, 20 on each side gives us the 40 and then watch this. We add the 20 here, 20 in the spine and 20 here, that gives us our 60. And that is generally how I figure out my initial starting chain. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so let me just draw this rectangle a little bit cleaner here. So we've got our starting chain is 20. We know that it's going to increase on the corners of our rectangle, right? And so we are going to expand 20 and 20. So this is on each side of that rectangle. And then of course you're also, actually let me do that again here and here. Okay, and actually let me just do this for my spine. We'll put it in green. And then I know my top is increasing by 20 and my bottom is increasing by 20. So the greens are all to do with the length. So 20, 20 and 20 gives us the 60. And in the blue, it's the width. So these two give us the 40. That is what's gonna end up giving me my 40 by 60 granny rectangle bed cover. Simple as that. I hope that made sense with those calculations, yeah? So, you know, and how many chains that is, it could be different for different people depending on your gauge. So that's why I would go by measurements first and then you can work out your 
number of chains. So let's have a look here to see if my theory actually works. So I've got a couple of rectangles here that I've already done. And an easy way to figure this out is let's measure my length and my width. So this one is done with a um, Lion Brands 24-7 cotton yarn. They call it a medium four. I like to say it leans more towards a lightweight number three, but that's, that's neither here nor there. But you will notice a difference between the thickness of this rectangle and this one. So that's why I did up a couple so you can see it generally works every time you do this. Okay, so my length here is five inches. And then if I turn it, my width is two and a half inches. So let's test out our theory. So here we have five inches in length and we had two and a half inches in width. So based on my method, if I take five and I subtract two and a half, that's going to give me two and a half. So that means my starting chain should have measured two and a half. So let's see if that's correct. So here, this is a solid granny rectangle. So I'm gonna start from this point to this point. And we're gonna measure that out. And guess what? Two and a half inches right there. So my method does work. So if you add two and a half inches here, and remember that we have to divide the other two and a half inches by two because you're gonna put a little bit on this end and a little bit on that end. Two and a half inches divided by two is one and a quarter. So on this end, Yep, I have one and a quarter. See, that's where that starts. And then I go on this end and look at that, one and a quarter. So one and a quarter plus two and a half plus one and a quarter gives me my length of five. So this particular rectangle was five inches by two and a half inches. And so I calculated that I had to start my spine with two and a half inches. Let's take a look at the other rectangle that I have here. So it's a bit larger and it's uh, using a medium four weight yarn, which is just uh, a little bit on the thicker side. So let's measure the length here. So the length here works out to be seven and a half inches. Now let's look at the width. Okay, so the width is four and a half inches. So if I were saying, if I were gonna say to you, um, please crochet me a rectangle that is seven and a half by four and a half. So if we go back here again, let's do another rectangle here. Okay, so we want seven and a half in length and four and a half in width. So we know we've got to take our length and subtract our width. So 7.5 minus 4.5 equals, whoops, not 30, three. So 7.5 minus, oh my goodness, I do not know what my brain is doing here. 7.5 minus 4.5 gives us three inches. So my starting chain should be three inches in length. So let's test this out. So I'm gonna start here, and that is the end of that chain. And guess what? Three inches. <laughs> this excites me to no, to no end. So let me just bring this a little closer. So see, that's the end and the end. And so our chain in the spine, three inches. So it just goes to show you, my method does work, and it works for the different uh, yarn weights as well. And it's basically using the same principles of how you build up a square. So what do you think guys? Are you ready to take on your granny rectangles in a whole new way? I hope so. This has been a long awaited uh, video. 
which I know many of you have always been asking me about specific measurements. I hope this is giving you the tools to be able to calculate and figure this out for yourself so that you can create just about anything. I know uh, blankets and afghans are the most common ones that I get asked about, but I know people are also doing things like making tablecloths or table runners. So I hope that was nice and clear and concise. If you have any deeper questions, please do feel free to leave it for me in the comment box down below. Or if any of you have something to add and to share regarding this method, please share it with us in the comments down below as well. You know, we're a great community here of crochet crafters, and it's always nice to share any helpful hints and tips. Now, if uh, some of you, I know you prefer to email me directly, uh, please do so. You can email me at info at crochetcrafty.com. And when you're asking me something specific, make sure to include a picture of your work. And that will help me kind of have a closer look and I can give you a more in-depth answer. And uh, once you create your granny rectangles, make sure to tag me. I'm on Facebook and Instagram at The Stitch Sessions. I'm very curious to see what you guys are gonna create with your granny rectangles. Now, if you are new here and you found this crochet quick chat really helpful, please, number one, share it with a friend that you think also might find it useful. And I invite you to come hang out with me every Wednesday morning. I generally upload a brand new crochet video tutorial then. So just click that subscribe button and don't forget to press the notification bell because sometimes YouTube is kind of funny that way. If you don't press the bell, it doesn't necessarily pop up on your screen. So make sure to do that and you'll be updated every time you check in to YouTube. And as always, come visit me on the website, crochetcrafty.com and check out a lot more free crochet tools there for you, especially things like sizing charts and other templates like that that will help you with other projects, as well as some free written patterns and a link to my Etsy shop. All right, gang, that's it for me this week. I hope you have a wonderful day. As always, take really good care of yourselves, and I'll see you guys in next week's session. Bye-bye.